Hello and welcome to another video, the final video in the armour casing upgrades for the next prototype of the powered armoured exoskeleton project. Of which in this video we'll be finishing off with helmet designs and some little covers to cover some gaps and take a look at the actual full suit of armour now it's all been upgraded in CAD. One thing I won't be doing in this video is actually printing any of these parts out because I have ordered a new 3D printer and I've not set it up yet. But I will be making a video for that and kind of doing a review of the first print of which I will print this helmet design. So with that being said, we'll go into CAD and take a look at this current improved helmet design. The reasons why it is, some things that I've thought about when I've been trying to design it and try to make it look good while being as functional as possible. And then we'll take a look at those little covers to cover up the gaps. So I thought we'd start in render on Fusion 360 and see what it looks like. Although, to be honest, I think my computer always struggles with it, is it never looks that great. Now, this is probably not going to be the final helmet, as I've said multiple times with different helmets, but I think I'm getting closer to it. So similar to the old helmet, which you can see here, I'm doing basically cameras and screens. So it's going to be cameras on the outside and then screens on the inside of this pull down visor. These I've actually just modelled off iPhone cameras and I'm pretty sure they're good enough for anything close up and can give quite a wide range. But on this side, at least for the 3D print, I want to experiment to see what happens space-wise if you essentially have bigger different types of cameras in one side. I haven't made these lenses to any size in particular, I just want to experiment with what they're going to come out like as a print and how it is holding in your hand and if I think they're going to in the way in any way. All of the cameras are just inset slightly, basically to protect them kind of like a phone case does, but it also does kind of make it look a bit better as well. Now if we come out of here and go into design, the idea of these pieces here are twofold. So one, they are basically the breathing parts, so you've got gaps here to allow for breathing to come out the sides, and these strakes, if you will, are something to grip when you're pulling the visor up and down. This is the best way I've come out with to basically have breathing holes without having an actual shot trap. So if you see down here, you can see how you've got holes coming all the way through, but you still have the guard up front. And while we're at this position, we'll point out the Mohawk. Now the Mohawk in this isn't like a roof scoop or anything. It's basically somewhere to have wires and possible air channels running through the helmet. In the previous prototype, as you can see here, I basically flattened it off here. However, having the armor basically have to run on the inside of this and then split off and go up that, and then to the sides in here, I don't know if that's actually better. So I want to print this one out to see if it actually works better off just having it completely separated up and having the armor all as one piece on the inside. The idea of this, of course, relevant to the rest of the armor casing is basically to have the armor laid inside of the 3D prints and bonded inside of the 3D prints, thereby making it easier to produce and modify. Going to the top, one dilemma I'm kind of dealing with is I want the helmet to be as narrow as possible, mainly so that when you rotate your head left and right or lean your head left and right, it doesn't hit the chest plate pieces down here. That is something that I found with some experiments. If you have it kind of go bigger around the chin, then it's easy to catch the helmet on the chest plate as the chest plate is going to sit up by 20 mil at least. So one thing I found with a lot of kind of fantasy cosplay helmets is they all kind of go really round and pointy at the front. That includes Space Marine helmets and actually ODST helmets. Although ODST helmets from above look quite rectangular slash circular, more like this, more like the actual shape of your head. But when you look at ODST helmets at the bottom around the mouth, they actually go quite narrow, quite like Space Marine helmets. The issue is with that, really you want more space around where your mouth is inside the helmet as that gives you more room for breathing. So I'm kind of trying to not do that while still trying to make it look interesting, at least if it's just making it interesting for YouTube. So I actually think the group that I probably got that right is actually the Fallout Power Armor where it goes bigger for the kind of respirator they've got built in. Now, when it comes to the visor, the visor pulls out like so, and then rotates over the back of the helmet into that position. That then allows the user to do all the everyday tasks without actually taking the full helmet off, just pull the visor up. It's also better if you need to do an everyday task that's like looking down around where your waist is without having to take the helmet fully off. One of the main reasons why I wanted to do this helmet and visor design was so that I could change the helmets out, both upgrade them and try different versions. So for example, if I want one with a built-in respirator, it can have a built-in respirator. 
if I want one just with regular lenses or a full screen, I can do that as well without changing the rest of the helmet. I can just slot a new visor on. I am rather convinced that many changes will happen over this, but I suspect it will mainly be in the visor. So again, if I can change it out, then it has all the better for it. You can just start to see a flat spot here. So if I do need some form of neck support, I can attach it onto there and then attach it onto the rest of the exoskeleton. I've also tried to make it so the helmet goes up quite a bit at the bottom, just so you can actually lean back and possibly even use it in a prone position. One thing that's actually hard to judge that I kind of pointed out in the last video is it's difficult to know where this helmet actually sits on the operator. It really doesn't take much for the helmet to either sit further back or further forward or further up or further down. And depending on where you actually are holding your head and what task you're doing, that actually differs quite a lot. So that and the position of any neck brace is something I can only learn when I've actually got it all printed out and possibly even built up. Moving on to the other little covers that I was talking about. So, so for the elbows, we've got these little covers that will attach onto the actuators. These again are a work in progress and I also can't tell if I prefer them plain or with some form of pattern on them. What will change on these is basically how far wrapped around they'll go and how far down they'll go. Due to how the actuator attaches, it's most likely that these will be stationary with the upper arm. So whether this comes further down or not to increase coverage, I'm not sure yet. And then if we go down to the legs, we can see we've got these covers for the knees. I can't remember if these are called to sets or not. I'm sure there's some medieval guys on there who can tell me the actual names for these as I have forgotten. This will again be most likely stationary with the upper part of the leg due to how the actuator attaches but they will provide some coverage to the back of the knee and cover the actuators themselves. They'll also most likely just protrude out from the knees ever so slightly, as you can see here, which is good because it does mean they won't catch whatever I do with them. And lastly, if we go back to the top, you can see how we've got this horrendously modeled poncho on slash gambeson or mantle. This I think is the best way still to cover over these gaps on the sides. I might actually make some pauldrons just to, for the looks of it, but I can't see them actually being useful. I can't see you actually being able to fit through any sort of doorway with them and therefore they won't be functional. However, if I can make this out of soft armor, lay some ceramic into it, that will be a great help at covering these gaps and also keep the rainwater off of the shoulders and off of the back of the neck. And I'm still gonna be keeping this half a cloak affair at the back to cover the back of the legs. Again, do the same, make it out of soft armor, out of Kevlar, and perhaps lay some ceramic into it. I still don't want to enclose the entire legs in with armor because one, you add a lot of weight, two, you get a lot of heat. Whereas if you have the back of the legs open, you really don't have much of a heat issue wearing this thing. So if I can use kind of this cloak affair to basically cover your rear end as well as the back of the legs, I think that's the best thing I can do. And we'll just finish off back into render so you can see the full suit here that we've been working on. This does at least give us a good opportunity to look at the armor casing upgrades that we've been doing over the last God knows how many videos. It's certainly an improvement on the old one. I'm sure I'll find some other little improvements that I can do, but other than that, I'm pretty pleased with how it's turned out. And again, while I'm sure I'll be changing the helmet in the future, I do think it's getting closer to a final design each one getting a little bit better. And there we have it, the final piece for the armor casing upgrades, or at least for now. Hopefully over the next few days, I'll be able to get the printer going and get a first print of that new helmet design and be able to compare it to the old helmet design, which is this one here. See how the quality is different and just see how they look differently in general. After that, it's actuator gearbox upgrades and then it will be moving on to the exoskeleton as I may as well start to get all of that cut out and ready. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please feel free to like and subscribe and I hope to see you on the next video. And last of all, I hope you have a great week.